there is this phenomena of date setting. People saying, Jesus is gonna come back at this date. I even think it's dangerous and maybe wrong to say, I believe that Jesus is coming back before this date. And because Jesus said, look at, look at back up at our text again. He said, they're gonna become, people are gonna say, I am he, and that the time has drawn near. This is why it's important for us to understand that there are birth pains. I want you to understand that things can look crazy in the world today, but Jesus might not be coming back for 50 years. And you say, well, I don't know how the world could go on like it is. It's because it's not going to. It's going to calm down and then reignite in another birth pain. And so when people say Jesus is coming back now, it gets a huge gathering. And false teachers and cults have learned it. That if they talk about prophecy and the last days and the end of the world, that they are going to get followers. When you think about people who set dates for the return of Jesus, you have October 22nd, 1944. If you're not familiar with the great disappointment, you should get familiar with it. His name was William Miller. William Miller was a deist, meaning that he believed that God existed, but he wasn't necessarily a born again Christian like you and I are. Now, some believe he changed the way he believed and he became more mainstream to what we call, would call Christians today. But he looked at a passage out of Daniel that talked about blessed are those who reach these days. And it's more than, it's like 45 days more than the three and a half years. So everybody goes, oh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know. And so he said, well, it's years, not days. And so he added it from the day, someday, he picked a day, he added to it and he came up to the last date that's possible for Jesus to come back, October 22nd, 1844. There were, he was hugely influential. People in the United States followed him. They didn't plant their crops that year. They sold what they had and gave it to people who didn't believe, trying to help them out. And then the date came and went. And, and it was, it's called the great disappointment because so many people believed it. He had his charts. He had his calculations. Everybody believed him. He had persuaded businessmen. He had persuaded men who wouldn't be persuaded in other areas that got on board with him and marketed what he said. The Millerites had an influence in Mormonism. When William Miller and, and all of this in Jehovah Witnesses, uh, in Seventh-day Adventist churches, all have their foundations in the Millerites and a lot of others. Joseph Smith from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints also predicted when Jesus would come back. The Jehovah Witnesses famously predicted Jesus coming back and he didn't. Picked a new date. Jesus didn't come back on that date. Picked a new date. When Jesus didn't come back on that date, they said he came back invisibly. He's in the inner chamber. And so Jesus says at one point, if they tell you I'm in the inner chamber, don't believe them. So that's my line when I'm talking to Jehovah Witnesses at my door. I say, you say Jesus came back secretly. Jesus told me not to believe you. Who should I believe? You or Jesus? You or Jesus? I think I'll believe Jesus. I think that's pretty easy. Sung Young Moon set dates. And it was one of the ways that he caught people's attention. Uh, Herbert W. Armstrong, a uh, worldwide church of God, said, before I die, Jesus is going to come. He died. Jesus did not come back. The Seventh-day Adventists, which are, have their roots in Millerism, which we can kind of understand why they do that. Uh, when you think of Mormonism, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they focus on the latter days because they know that gets people excited. They're interested in it. Jehovah Witnesses set dates because it got people excited and got them interested in it. And in, 2000, in 1994 and 2011, we, we probably all here remember Harold Campy saying, yeah, he's got, since gone to be with the Lord, but he set a date in 2011 that Jesus was going to return. And I can't tell you how many times I had to tell people He's not coming back when Harold Camping says he is. Because Jesus said, I'm coming back at a time you don't expect it. All these people are listening to Harold Camping. Why? I don't know. It's frustrating to be truthful that people so easily follow these people that set dates. I am suspicious when people start to say, Jesus is coming back by this point. I'm not saying it's not easy to get into. Chuck Smith, Israel became a nation in 1948, believed that a generation was 40 years, that's 1988. 
And in 1981, he believed that that was going to be the end. Now, as far as I know, he never said, Jesus is coming back before then. But he said, and I heard him, I believe Jesus is coming back in 1981. He never said this is a prophecy. He was careful to say from time to time, I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Not I'm wrong, but I could be wrong. And he was wrong. And it's dangerous to do that. It's dangerous to start setting dates because you, there might not be a great disappointment, but there's going to be disappointments. And Jesus simply said, don't do it. And I think the reason he said stay away from people who do it is because look at all these groups that set dates and are wrong. Now, this makes what Jesus said even more important in Matthew 24, 44. He said, therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you don't expect him. You got to be ready. You got to be ready now. Don't be ready now because, because there's pestilence and famines and wars and earthquakes. Jesus said those things will be. These are birth pains. But be ready now because we don't know when he's coming back and he could come back at any moment. So you gotta be ready. 